I am in my journey to be a Keller Williams approved trainer. And I have my 70 reviews out of the 75 that are needed. And the last few reviews I need are related to a night course. So that's why we're having this class today. Um, the focus around this Ignite session, spark number two, is lead generation. It really is the core of our business. And we know right now lead generation matters a lot. So thank you guys for being here um, with your registration. In case you have to leave early, I will send you the link to do a survey for me at the end. And those watching on Facebook Live, I will comment below with the survey and follow up with all of you that have watched it. And at the end of this PowerPoint presentation, you'll see the ability to help review and give me a review on this as well. So I'm gonna get started here. If you're just joining us, if you check the chat, I put the link on jcermak.com, that's J-A-Y-C-E-R-M-A-K.com slash downloads. I have the handout that goes along with this. Now, the neat thing about this new version of Ignite is we're gonna do some talk about scripts and models and systems, and we're gonna go into command today. So I am a command expert in essence, and I'm gonna actually be able to show you some things to manage your database. So we're actually kind of doing a mini command class today too. We're gonna to talk about contacts and tags and smart plans because that's lead generation follow-up and how do you manage your database so that's included in today's training which is exciting to see this new model of ignite so thank you guys for being here um, at the end of the day the goal of spark is to get for agents to get their first appointment within two weeks and then to set you up for signing your first contract in 30 days now some of you on this call may have already been an agent for years. It's still relevant no matter what, but that's really the concept of how they redid this. Imagine a Ignite and Bold came together and had a baby. That's what Ignite Spark really is. It's kind of like a, a new version that we're doing. So I'm excited to roll this out. This is my first time doing this with you guys. So thank you for joining us on the journey. So what we're gonna work out today is the goal every day is to help you build your database by practicing scripts, you're gonna contact prospective clients and then getting to know your market is really part of what you're gonna do. So with this whole course in the next couple of weeks, you're gonna establish the core activities and habits that you will use your entire real estate career. And then we're gonna follow up with returning agents on their activities and stuff. So the, the point of Ignite in essence is to get you into productions to learn the models and systems and scripts that go with it. So with that information and said, let's go ahead and get started. So what successful agents do every day? This is powerful. So on the left-hand side, we're gonna talk about what you do every day to grow your business. I hear every day right now, what do I do right now? What should I be doing in this pandemic? And well, nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is the method you do things in. You still need to lead generate and you still need to talk to people. And you still have to follow up with people because there's still homes being sold and homes being purchased every day. So if you look on the left here under grow business, number one is lead generation, right? We need you to lead generate for buyers and sellers every day. Now, today is not the right time to push for, you gotta buy a home, you gotta sell a home. However, if we use care and candor, just checking in how they're doing and do you need any help with anything, we're finding by just showing that you care, real estate comes up naturally. So you will lead generate for buyers in a slightly different way today. Um, then we're gonna make seller listing presentations and get listings is one of the goals, right? So your job would be to go get listings and have them sign paperwork for that. And then also the same thing with buyer presentations if you work that. So if you're a listing agent primarily or you work with buyers or you do both, that's your job, right? Lead generate for people to do transactions with and then make your presentation so that you can get them to sign the listing contract or the buyer's brokerage agreement. And then it's the preview real estate, which fortunately, thanks to the world today, you can preview real estate without having to go into a home by studying the MLS, by studying the numbers, by doing the virtual tours, just the same way the clients are seeing homes and touring them with Matterport and these 3D models, you could be doing the same thing to really know your inventory. Because at the end of the day, what people need today is the economist of choice. Are you able to give them the advice? Do you know your market so well that you can answer them? And that's what we'll talk about scripts as well. Now, on the right-hand side, what do you do to run your business in real estate? Well, running your business means you need to market to seller listings because we know if we follow the Millionaire's Real Estate Agent book, right? The model of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book comes down to leads, listings, and leverage. And whoever has the listings in today's market 
is really going to uh, you know, lead the market. And then you're gonna show buyers houses if you're doing that, which we're doing that virtually now. You're gonna negotiate contracts as part of your job. You're gonna do transaction management, which is the contract to close. Vendor management, meaning do you have a relationship with your mortgage, your insurance, your title companies, your vendors, like uh, inspectors. And then you're going to have the ability to need to set your goals, even if they're little goals for the day. You have your compliance or risk management, which means verifying all your contracts are good and getting everything to the office. You attend training like you're doing right now. And then it's about managing your money. And that's what really successful agents do every day. This hasn't changed, even though we're in a current pandemic. So the whole goal of our time here is to model what successful agents do every day and then show you how to do it. So our focus today is specifically on the grow side, and we're focused on lead generate for buyers and sellers. So we're going to talk about lead generation today. We're going to share with you technologies and tips and tricks that work, and we're going to help you understand the lead generation model which allows you to then launch into all other areas of the business. Because as Gary Keller always tells us, you have two businesses, right? You have the business of real estate and everybody has the business of lead generation. I mean, if I went to school and became a doctor and I came out of school as a doctor and put a sign in the yard that says, I'm a doctor, I don't instantly have a business. Lawyers have the same issue. Well, that's what real estate has. Meaning when you first start, People don't just run to you saying, oh my God, you're a realtor, I need you. You got to tell people about it and then attract people. And that's where the lead generation comes in. So our focus is really the agenda for the day is to focus on the lead generation model, which comes from the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. And I'm going to show you today the newest version of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent 2.0 that Gary Keller, Jay Papazan, Dave Jinks are working on right now, rewriting, I guess, updating more than anything because the fundamentals are the same. Only minor things changed in the last uh, 15 years since the book came out. Then we're going to focus on lead generation. We're going to focus on your database and your sales pipeline. And the whole focus is to build your daily habits so that you can build your database, script and practice, lead generation, and then contract practice, which you can do with your broker and stuff. So if we look at the big picture of all this stuff, the focus of today's Spark session is the lead generation model. It is important for you guys to understand how what they are learning today fits into the bigger picture of stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our whole goal is understanding the lead generation model provides a larger vision, larger vision of the interconnected tasks and habits and how they help fund our big why. So I doubt many of you were born saying I'm going to be a real estate agent. Most of us though have big whys of things that we want to do. Like for me, Mine is transformational leadership. I want to be able to transform as many lives as possible and help people achieve the dreams and goals that they have. Now, that's my why. Your why could be totally different than that. And at the end of the day, real estate has such unlimited amount of income you can make that it can fund whatever you want your life to do. So you learn a lot about that, right? And lead generation is important because you know you can then see the big picture of everything that's happening here so we can get you to the closing. So if you look at the model here on the right, and I'll go ahead and close out those other windows I'm seeing, the whole goal, and this says for a solo agent, the reality is it's the same if you're a team or anything else. The, the model itself starts with number one, which is lead generation. You need prospects and marketing to capture people, meaning I need someone to talk to every day in order to build my business. Then we're capturing those people, and then we're going to talk about your database, which your database is simply broken up into two categories. Leads, which are going to be people you haven't talked to yet. So my neighbor's friend is thinking about selling their home. That's a lead, thanks to my neighbor. And I, my job is to call them and have a conversation about what they need. That's a one-way and offer-based touch program is leads. Contacts are people that I already know, we've already connected, and my job is to keep talking to them, to connect to them. And then our focus is to cultivate the relationship, meaning we got to manage our pipeline. Because what the National Association of Realtors teaches us is most people buy and sell maybe every four to seven years. Meaning your follow-up plan isn't just, hey, you think about buying now? No, we just bought a house. Okay, from the next time they buy a house, you're talking maybe another four to seven years or longer to follow up with them. That's what we're here to do. So that's a big part of this. And we're 
excited to show you today's smart plans, which will help you stay in touch with them. So cultivating that lead or that contact and building the relationship, and your whole goal is to nurture, qualify them to ultimately get them to an appointment. Because at some point, these people you know have to buy or sell because very few people stay in their home until they die. They usually go and it's usually a life event. And our job is to communicate with them until they finally say, yes, I need you. Then we're going to get you an appointment. And then we're going to go from an appointment to an active listing or an active buyer that we're working with. Then we're going to work with those people until we get the home under contract. And then we're going to go from under contract to close, which in our world is payday. Meaning you have to do one through seven and learn every skill in there in order to get to number eight, which is when you actually get paid. So that's a big part of what we're going to talk to today. So looking at this model, we kind of explain what it is. I broke it down for you. And, and the whole goal that we're focusing on today is really the top part, lead generation. We will show you the database and we will show you part of the follow-up activities that you need to do to start getting them from a captured perspective all the way down to connected in this session. So let's talk about lead generation, right? The whole goal that we're going to focus on this is prospecting and marketing brings leads and contacts into your database and that you should be prospecting based and marketing enhanced. And ultimately your lead generation efforts never stop. You guys, all that changes if you're a mega agent or a big person is you go from finding buyers and sellers to attracting talent. Gary Keller still lead generates every day, finding people in his world, and he's recruiting agents to the company, so his business never stopped. And it's no different than if I were a mega agent, and instead of me doing the selling anymore, because someone else is doing that, instead of me doing the buyers anymore, someone else is doing that, then my job is to cast a vision for my team and keep growing it. And if it's just you right now, then you are the lead generator, you're everything. And this is a big part of it because you have to have people. And I know we say the word lead generation. You're probably like me. I get a little uncomfortable with that word. Yeah, it just means having conversations. And there's never been an easier time to talk to people right now because they're home. They're scared is what we say. They're, they're concerned. They're worried about the market and what's happening in the world. And at the end of the day, if you just show them some care, you're going to strengthen relationships that will last forever. This is where our real estate organization and any real estate business in the world today is going to recenter themselves and re get back into relationship with people because we got away from the relationship. The companies that talk to your people more than you do are your Zillows of the world, realtor.com that have billions of dollars invested in marketing and following up with those people. And the consumers are choosing an online place to tell them what the data is yet. They're still using a realtor to buy and sell a home, which means they need you. And the more that you can start building that relationship and share with them what's happening and help become their voice of reason in a market like this to ask questions to, you will strengthen that relationship and never give it back. This is where truly I think we take back our industry. So if we are looking here and your handouts and stuff, if we focus on lead generation and database today, you know, what is lead generation? It is the life of an agent's business. And we said it should never stop. It's purposeful and intentional. And it moves you closer to your goal as part of your larger strategy. So we're going to keep going through this model. And at the end of the day, the goal is to help you with what do I say to people? Who can I be talking to? How do I talk to my database? How do I get new people into my database so that I ultimately can, at the end of the day, lead to a sale at some point? So we're talking about lead generation. So this slide is supposed to have a video. Let me see if it works. Nope, it did not have the video that it was supposed to have in there. So we will not have a video on this, but the video was supposed to be about why lead generation is important. At the end of the day, I kind of already explained it, right? Lead generation is important because every business in the world needs to tell people about their business and then offer them something. If you're a brand new store and a grocery store, people don't just show up if they're driving by. Now they might if they need groceries, yet every company, when they're starting off and every business in the world advertises. And we have to lead generate to say, hey, I'm open, I'm in business. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because you might be a secret agent, which means you're in real estate, yet you don't tell people so they don't know. 
And then I did this when I started. I got mad when people were buying and selling homes and didn't call me when I was the one who didn't tell them I was in real estate and didn't follow up with them and didn't have a system to stay in touch to say, oh, why didn't you use me? And I will share my personal pain on that. It was my own family members, my brother and I, and he was in a different state. So I was going to get a referral. I connected him with an agent. And at that moment, he wasn't able to buy yet because he had to fix some credit things. And then over a couple months, I didn't really follow up very much. The other agent forgot to follow up. And my brother walked into an open house, fell in love with it. And the agent said, well, great. I'll go ahead and write the contract for you. And did the whole thing with no referral fee to me and totally cut out of the deal. And that was my own brother who still says he's sorry. Yet the reality is it's my sorry. It's my bad. I didn't check in with him to see how he's doing. I didn't have a system around that. That's why we're going to talk about that today. But we all have to lead generate. We all need to do that for our business. So the whole goal, and if you're in your guide right now, we're on page six in that participant guide. And if you just joined us, if you go to J-A-Y-C-E-R-M-A-K.com, jcermak.com, my name, and click the downloads button, this download is available to you. And on page six of that, you're going to find the comprehensive list of prospecting and marketing activities that you can refer to in the future. It has a list of things that you can do for the lead generation. So the lead generation is an ever-evolving list of ideas, methods, and practices to bring leads into your business. And there are broad categories of both prospecting and marketing to choose from that you'll see in that list. Even though a variety of factors and the market preferences, your budget that you want to spend will dictate the type of sources that you will use, it is still best practice to be a prospecting-based business with marketing enhancements. Like prospecting-based marketing enhance is what we say. So prospecting in general is proactive and direct, means keeps you in the active versus reactive state. It is the act of searching for your leads. Now, most agents, when they're first starting, do this at a high level. What's interesting or fascinating is if you study those agents who've been in business a long time, you know what they start doing eventually? They don't lead generate eventually because they get referrals and their clients send them clients and they build so much momentum that naturally people start calling them off of a sign that they see everywhere and people just start calling them. And basically they get into a reactive state of, sure, I can help you with that home. Versus the proactive state of saying, hey, I need to go get more people so that I can help more people. And you're going to learn about that. So, yeah, it is best to be prospecting based and marketing enhanced because it is cost effective. If you go out and prospect things, you guys, we don't have to spend a lot of money today to do this. There's so many ways to generate things. And a lot of this stuff, it's as simple as just talking to people you already know on your phone. I promise you, your phone has money in it today. That if you called some of the people in here and just said, how are you doing? What can I help you with? By the way, I know you might be worried about the real estate market. And because I study it at any time, just let me know if there's anything I can help you with or any questions you might have. You'd be surprised how first no one's calling them. We heard from Mo Anderson, who is one of our culture icons of the company. She was the first CEO Gary Keller hired after himself. She's still a big part of our organization. And Mo shared that she's pissed right now. She's she's a wealthier woman now. She wasn't always. And she said, you know what? I spent a lot of money with my florist. I spent a lot of money with restaurants that I go to and I take people to. I mean, we're talking a lot of money, not like five, ten dollars. And she said not one of them called her. And actually, she's so mad right now about that. She's thinking about switching companies for that reason, like calling a different florist and telling them, basically, don't you ever do this to me. In this pandemic, people want to hear from you. And if they don't hear from you, they might be mad about it. And what we're finding is if those companies aren't calling you, because I think about it for yourself, who's called to you to say, how are you doing? Hopefully, one of us from Keller Williams has called you and your fellow friends and family have called you, yet... Did you ever hear from your lawyer or your economist of choice or your doctor? Has your doctor called to check in on you? We're a business. You would be surprised that if you just called and said, how are you? And I don't have to give them everything or the shirt off my back. I can just point them to a resource or a lot of people just want to know someone cares about them and is thinking about them. You will strengthen relationships as we were sharing. 
So I love this whole little paragram uh, or diagram, I should say, pyramid is what I was going for. And the pyramid showing the fact that marketing might be money intensive, yet you guys, you could be doing lead generation for new people with Facebook ads in command. And right now there's a special they're running that if you've never run an ad in command before and you run your first one, they actually have a little banner that says, if you spend $75 on new ads, Facebook is going to give you 25 bucks back. So you'll actually have another $25 to use on another ad. So you're basically getting $25 of free advertising money. And while 75 might seem like a lot, we're getting people at $75 should be getting you anywhere from 40 to 70 plus leads because we're finding in our industry, we're getting leads for $2 on average, but typically less than a dollar. So for less than a dollar per person, I can, as a new person, start building my database there. Now, if you don't want to spend money, we also have the free, which is your phone, your phone. You already have people, you know, people. Facebook, you have so many connections on Facebook that if you just reach out to them and said, if there's anything I can help you with, there's so much money just sitting out there and it's a big opportunity right now. So the whole focus that we're going to be covering next is, is the database. So that was the lead generation model. Now we need to talk about the database part of this, which is okay. Well, where do I store these people and how do I systemize this? So what we're going to do and I'm going to do for you is actually talk about the database part of this which a database in simple terms is just a place to centrally store your information. So our whole goal, and before you go any farther, it is important to that everyone truly understand the purpose of having a database. So at Keller Williams, we developed Command, which is part platform, uh, part of the platform, and Command is your database. So Command is even more than a, what we call a CRM, which used to stand for Customer Relationship Management. It is beyond that. It's one central place to do everything in your business. And a database is a tool that certainly centrally stores customer and prospect contact information, which is regularly updated with new details and events and can be organized and sorted as needed. And it's continually added to in order to increase business. So a database is a tool to nurture and manage the relationship and to track the interactions that they have with those people. A well-tended database produces leads. A powerful database managed by powerful schedule produces a predictive flow of leads. And from a predictive flow of leads, you can expect a predictable flow of business and income. Don't do what I did as an agent, especially my first couple of years. I called people randomly. I didn't systemize it. And I ended up, uh, it was a shift. It was 10 years ago uh, after the last shift. And uh, I, I had seven transactions that all failed. So my first three years of real estate, I had zero sales. Didn't close anything. I didn't know how to lead generate. I got really bad open houses from people. Didn't get any skills growing. And it wasn't until I joined Kel Williams that I went from zero-ish transactions to 11 in my first year with them. So the whole goal is the size of your database and your activities to follow up with people in your database will determine the size of your bank account. It's your database is it the lifeline of your business. Every business has a database of people. You've seen it when you go and buy something from a store and they say, can I have your email address? Can I know more information about you? We'd like to send you coupons. That's marketing. That's lead generation. It's a reason to touch base with you. So at the end of the day, your database is the second segment of the lead generation model. And the lead generation efforts bring leads and contacts into your database. And the fact that command can automatically segment your database into two powerful categories, leads and contacts, seen in the model here. And in your database, leads and contacts are segmented because they will be working, you'll be working with them in a different way. Leads are people I don't know yet. So I'm not going to ask them the same questions I might ask a contact. I don't have a relationship, but I want to get into a relationship or and I want to get in a relationship with them. So with the leads, you have their contact information, but you don't know their motivation yet. And you can infer the motivation. Like if someone said, hey, the Thompsons down the street might be thinking of buying, here's their name and number. Well, guess what? You have their name, number, and you think or know that they might be interested in buying a home, right? If you're getting stuff from Facebook, you know what you're getting from Facebook today? If you do this lead gen and you use Facebook ads in command, and you use their lead form, you're getting their name, number, and email address. 
and interest in either a property that you put on there, a form that you had, maybe it's your app or Keller Mortgage to save money, you can get an idea of what they're looking for. And the goal is to call, email, text them until I get a response of them telling me what are their needs. So you start one way. You're gonna offer, but it's an offer-based communication that is geared towards getting a response to understand their motivation and then begin a relationship. However, with the contacts, well, you've implied or explicit permission to have an ongoing communication with them already. You communicated with them and they've responded, meaning it's a two-way conversation. So an example of that could be just meeting somebody in line at the grocery store, which you may not be doing right now, and finding out that your neighbors or somebody that you went to the same college, you can exchange content information and then let them know you're in real estate. Now, what's interesting about that story is, well, I can't do that in the grocery store, Facebook does that instantly for me. I can see my friends, my family, their friends, and see if we have something in common. And I can learn so much more from online social media at times about a person that would take me years to build information about them. What's their spouse's name? What school do they go to? What other sports teams do they like? What shows do you guys have in common? What are their kids' names? What are their pets' names? That's a lot of data. And if you haven't thought about it, Facebook has most of that or the social media channel they're on, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I can get so much information from people's photos, the things that they post about, the things they put in their profile. So while this example says meeting people in person, you don't need to meet in person to build your contacts because technically if you're friends with them on Facebook, that's a contact. You at least know them and they know you somehow. Now I might want to strengthen my relationship but that person is not a lead, they're a contact. The lead would be, I don't know the person down the street, so I do an ad about my app or um, my new listing. They call me, now I'm gonna look to build a relationship with them because now we don't know each other, yet my goal is to get to know them. So there's all kinds of great things here. So if you look at the leads part of this, the part of having a successful database is to establish consistent and powerful and purposeful communication. This comes in the form of using a touch campaign to stay top of mind. So if you turn to page seven of your handout, here's the layout of what they're looking at. So with leads, you want 19 to contact, meaning you're gonna do 19 touches in order to get a communication from them. So what they're saying for leads that you can do four touches could be a quarterly phone call. Hmm, that's a smart plan, which we will teach you how to do that today. So we're gonna focus on a quarterly phone call, reminding you to call them every quarter with a lead. 12 touches, I could send them a monthly email, newsletter, or marketing report, or video. Hmm, we have that as well, where I could do that with the monthly neighborhood nurture if I know where they live, or I could send them information about it. Two touches could be a promotional direct mail, like a magnet, calendar, market report, and then one touch a year could be an annual event, party, movie, screening, get together. Now that would be what a system I could use with the leads part of this. Now there's tons of other methods and more aggressive ways to work your leads and do things with your smart plan. On the contact side though, it takes about 36 touches to convert somebody. So with 19 touches, if I go back, was 19 touches to get a connection meaning I'm gonna keep reaching out to you 19 times and the goal is that you call me back and talk to me. That's a connection. This side says, hey, it takes 36 touches a year to convert them to either a relationship or get a referral from it. So four touches a year would be four phone calls, hmm, quarterly phone call again. 26 touches a year would be the bi-weekly email, offering them some type of information of value. If we know where they live, you guys, command can do that automatically with the monthly neighborhood nurture, or in this case, bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, which is two emails a month about their neighborhood specifically. And if you want a tip and trick of a script around that, they're all nervous about the home values of what's going to happen to their home right now. So ask them, are you nervous about the home values? One thing that I have unique that I can share with you is a monthly neighborhood nurture, which is only about your neighborhood, by the way. I won't bother you with everything happening in all of America and all the real estate numbers. I will only talk about your neighborhood of, I live in a neighborhood called Knoll Ridge. In the neighborhood of Knoll Ridge, and then you'll get that email twice a month and keep you informed. Would that be okay? They're going to want to say yes to that because even Zillow can't do that right now. They don't have neighborhoods. Zillow has general idea. It can give you a zestimate on your home, but they don't tell you about the market. 
So that's some scripts that would go with this. And then two touches a year, like an event or a plan. You guys can do a virtual happy hour for the neighbors, do something to entertain the kids. And then four touches a year of either promotional direct mail, a magnet, a card. If you have an event coming and you send them a invite, that's uh, one of those touches. So there's a system for it. So 19 smart plans, basically your smart plan would have to have 19 touches for leads and 36 touches for contacts. And these are live inside of command today. So I'm gonna do a demo here of how to manage your database. The gateway to most of using the most command features always starts with the contact. You have to have a contact in the system. So I'm gonna show you really quick to demonstrate how to use command with the contacts. So I'm gonna come out of here and I'm coming into command. So if this is your first time in command, and again, this isn't an in-depth command training. We have a lot of resources available and I have tons of training on YouTube. And if it's your first time in command, by the way, which is agent.kb.com, leverage the question mark in the corner because we have help information and a Keller Williams University help article. So I'm gonna show you right now how to add a contact and if you want the step-by-step -step instructions of what I'm gonna do, here they are. And here's what we're physically gonna go through together to do. So if you ever have any questions later after this, or you wanna practice and do this on your own later, you can come in. Now, I always explain the best way to understand command is it's like your smartphone. Your smartphone is what we call the remote control of your life, meaning one central device and all the apps you wanna to use to run your personal life. Command is the same concept, one central place to bring in all the apps and things you want to use for your business. And you'll notice in command, if I click the KW and pop out the tray, everything really starts with contacts. So we're going to add a contact really quick, and I'm just going to add the basics of it. And don't worry, we'll, we'll get arrows coming in, but it should be working fine. So I'm going to click and say, add a contact in the right-hand corner. So let's say today, I just want to add um, John Malinak. That's my uncle. So I can add John Malinak to the system. I would need an email address if I have it. So maybe it's John Malinak at gmail.com. If I have his phone number, I can put it in. I know it's in uh, Chicago and I'll just make up a number for this example. I'll have to pull it up later. Now this is where you'd mark it as a lead. So a lead would be, I don't know this person. So let's say it wasn't my uncle John, it was his buddy, Joe. And Joe is a friend that he knows who's thinking about buying or selling. Well, I don't know Joe yet. My uncle does. So I would mark Joe as a lead by just checking this box. And all it does is put a little L next to his name saying he's a lead. And then once I do know the person, like this case, I know my uncle, I've got him as John. And what we're going to do here is basically you're just adding the contact. So with the activity here, you're gonna be able to, and you guys will be able to add your own as well. So while I'm showing you this, you can either follow along and do your own or next time you're in command, go ahead and add a contact to the system. Start with people you know, add yourself to the system as well so you can test things out. Now I'll add him to this system. I can use a tag, which we'll talk about tags here in more depth in a second. So let's just say it is family. So I can tag him as family. And under add more information, I can add more info about him. The big one would be, under additional contact information, do I have his address? So let's just say for this example, it is this address in Chicago. It's not his, but I can put one in. I'd be able to give him information about his neighborhood. Now there's tons of stuff I can get about him, but that would be the things that matter right now. Name, number, email address, and then do you know their home address? There's all kinds of stuff you could add. Again, again we're here to go depth of everything you can do. I'm kind of just showing you the basics of how to add a contact simply to your system. So I've got a name, number, email address. It's a family member. And then I went ahead and put in an address for him. You can come to under about and add more information. Like if you know their a description or their birthday, home anniversary, other family members that you know of theirs. Sales pipeline to track the fact of like, is this a lead or is it from contacts? And then your own ability to add your own custom fields, which is more in depth, but basically more data to collect. So if I say create on this, I've just added him to the system. Let me refresh this and see why it's giving me issues right now. It's possible my filters are causing a problem. Clear all. Okay. But that's the simplicity of adding a contact to the system. 
So once they've been added, and I see we're having an issue with command right now, but the whole goal is to add them to the system. And you'll see here from this image that the context of my system will just have their name. Like here's Aaron Cole. The leads will have a little L next to their name. And my goal is just putting them in the system to track it. So what you guys can do on your own activity, which for time purposes, we won't do it right now, but put together the idea, right? What you're gonna do today at some point is add a contact to the system. And if you're new to using command, just add one person like yourself or somebody in your phone. And then you can use that time to start getting more information. So at the end of the day, you should be adding contacts like non-leads, people that you're connected with. That could be a personal contact, somebody from social media, a past coworker, people that you're involved in with cloud, uh, clubs or activities. Some of your contact data might have holes or missing data. That's an opportunity for you to have a conversation with those people to get more information. Like I might have my family members and not have their current address to send them neighborhood information. Fortunately, my mother does a calendar every year of family members and sends us an annual update of their addresses. So I will use that calendar to add the rest of my family members, which I will admit I haven't even done yet. So no excuse, time to check in with my family members, add them to command, put them on that plan because even though I've got family in Chicago and um, Tennessee and a uh, cousin in Las Vegas, I could be giving them information about where they live. And if they know somebody looking to buy or sell, I can be getting referrals out of that. So I have a missed opportunity as well in that. But you're gonna want to do this as an activity yourself and put some time in for that. So if we continue on the journey of managing your database, the next part is what, what are called custom tags. So a tag, I know I mentioned it briefly before, really just means grouping people together. Tags we've already built for you in the system might be if they're an agent or a KW agent, we have those tags. We have a tag for buyer and a tag for seller and a tag for allied vendor or allied resources, which would be vendor. Yet you might wanna create your own tags. So the tag I created of family was my own. I added that tag and you can even color code them. So you can start doing those. So the whole goal of the tag is just to help you organize and customize this. And it's gonna allow you to create categories that you add to your contacts. So some examples could be, we already said buyer seller, but maybe renter, investor, first time home buyer, luxury, open house, are just some ways you can segment your people. And there's tons of examples of ways to do that. And I will actually show you mine and what I've done in my system. So if I come back to command again, and this time I'm gonna to go to settings to show you all of my tags. And under command settings in here and under contacts, I have an entire field for custom tags. And I have, well, I have way too many tags because I accidentally did an import of a file and I have a bunch of tags in here, but this is your ability to create your own tags. And I do tags for teaching and training and some tags that I've done might be, uh, this was for a sold home. I had one for downline for my profit share, sphere of influence, family reunion, KW Fort Wayne, um, I've got one for bold, who are my bold agents that I know, open houses, luxury, builder, states. I've done it by states and locations, who are my OPs, snowbirds, uh, enemies was a joke, it's not real. <laughs> I'll delete that one, that's not supposed to be there. But it's your ability to create your own, smart plans, um, over the rainbow, Jazzy Jeff, these are all my test ones. But you have an unlimited number of ways you can tag people. A good example of tag, Think about Amazon. If I buy shoes off Amazon, guess what Amazon just did? Tagged me. They tagged me as buying shoes so that the next time I get an email from them, they can remind me, congratulations on the purchase of shoes. You might also like this belt or shoe polish or this outfit to go with the shoes or other shoes like it. Tags are gonna be powerful to help you because Amazon has figured out how to give me a one-to-one -one relationship. Meaning when I go to my Amazon today, it is different than your Amazon and I am more likely to open the email because it's information I care about. That's what we're doing with this platform and why we've built command so that you can get more information. For an example, let's say I have my clients who like dogs and I wanna tell them about a new dog park or a building that has a new dog community or a new event for dogs. Well, I can use that tag to take my big database and narrow it down to people who like dogs and only send it to the people who like dogs. So if you don't have a dog, you're not like, why the heck is Jay sending me something about dogs? I don't have a dog. Same thing with kids. I might do something for kids or my clients who like golf. 
or waterfront or boating. A tag can help me narrow it down to send them the right message for them. So you guys are gonna to wanna to create your own tags, but I want to give you some ideas. And I think it's personally easier to create the tag inside there and then color code them, right? Green could be for money, purple for bold, uh, red for KW agents. What do you wanna to do to color code these so that you can then have a visual to quickly identify with your database? And your database, most people, by the way, are gonna have more than one tag. They're gonna have multiple and that's okay. But what's something they might have in common, like dogs, kids, the school that they go to, a specific condo building that they're part of. Um, my waterfront clients who have boats would want information about the International Boat Show that people who don't like boats or don't have a boat may not care about. It just helps you get that narrowed down. Perfect, so now we have a demo of managing your database of what we call smart view. So let me refresh this real quick. I'm gonna try an incognito mode. So if you've never used command, and what's happening for me isn't working. So I'm gonna to go to command again in what's called incognito mode. And my goal is when I come in here, oh, I see why it's stuck. That's okay. This is my test account that I'm using. So I'll move my picture out of the way, log out. I'll go back in as J. Here we go. And see if my contacts are working. Beautiful. Okay, so I had an issue with my cookie. Something was messing it up. So if your command was doing what mine was, which is giving me an error message on the contacts, and you're in Google Chrome, if you click the three dots in the right-hand corner, there's a mode called incognito. It basically just acts like you've never been to this website before. And typically, because we're doing so many updates to command, that sometimes fixes things. All right, so here is actually that contact we added, which was John Malinak, who has the family tag now. So here's some other contacts that I have of test ones that I'm doing. And um, here's one that I had a person who's interested in Keller Mortgage refinancing, right? Here's some people that I have an actual recruit. Ramona is an agent from another brokerage that I met at an open house. And I'm now keeping track of her to keep track of it. I do referrals with other agents. So my friend Lori has a referral I sent her of Oscar that she's helping me work, right? My dog lovers, uh, people that are retires, people that are realtors, golf schools, my test for Mickey Mouse. You're, you're gonna see the tags come up over and over again. But one of the things I wanna do is narrow down my database. So when you all come in here, I'm gonna come in to manage my smart view real quick, revert back to original. Okay, so when you first log in, this is what your contact list is gonna look like. Now, I have a total of 762 contacts here on the right-hand side. I can do up to 50 at a time to view them. And these are my contacts. Now, some of them are agents. You'll see I've got a lot of them that are called this past renters group. Um, I have a lot of old leads that came in from another system. And I can create my own smart view on this. So what you're gonna do is create what's called a custom view. Smart views help you narrow down your list to see things quickly to customize them. So a good example of a smart view would be I can filter things. So if I came to filter here, maybe I just want to see my leads only. Only show me my leads. I'm going to hit apply. And these are the leads I have in the system, which is 14 leads, which means they're identified with an L next to them. And I have 14 people in the system that are identified as leads. And I now can come to the smart view and save it where it says create new smart view. And I'm going to call this one for leads. So maybe I just call this one um, April leads. I can even make that my default, which means every time I log into command, just take me directly to my leads first. I'll hit save. And now that is now a filter for me to quickly jump to. So I have some for the KW app, which are who in my database, 14 people have the app and the app is identified by having the little circle with a check mark next to their name. So I can see who are my friends or family that have my app. There's my aunt, there's my brother who bought the home without me, <laughs> and I'm able to narrow down that list. So there's a lot of options in here. I did one for birthdays. I've already got one for leads. My buyers, I can narrow down to my buyers and just quickly filter by any buyers that I'm working with right now or anyone that has uh, different smart views that they have. How many of my contacts don't have addresses? The one that says no neighborhoods. I have 725 people in my database that I don't know where they live. I don't have their address. These were old leads that I had coming in the system. So. Hopefully that gives you some insight on how you guys can do the same thing to customize your own, what we call smart views, which is just filtering it down. So that's one of those things there. Then we're gonna go on to 
managing your database, the interactions of your database. And I think that's easier to show if I just pull up myself. So I'm going to go back to our window, come to context. Remember I said I added myself to the system. So I'll just search my name, Jay Sarmac. I have a couple examples of Jay Sarmac in here, but the one that updated most recently would be this one. So this is a contact card and we're talking specifically about the interactions, which means like, what are my people doing? So in your database, you can create and save custom views. We did that one, sorry. Um, with managing your activities, once you have the contact of your database, now it's about having the conversation. It is their, your job to qualify the lead or contact and assess how ready and motivated they are. You're going to follow up and use the following questions. So you might say, hey, when do you need to be in your new home? When is your time frame to sell a home? Where are you going? When do you want to be there? And command will allow you to track the results of those conversations through logging interactions. And then that interaction could be a note from a conversation you've had, meeting notes, phone calls, text messages, appointment information. So let's talk about how to add those. So here is my contact of Jay Cermak. Here are all the different ones. I just finished up a care plan that I created to follow up with me. And you'll see in my timeline, everything I've ever done, basically myself in the system, including looking up properties, sending text messages to Jay. Um, he's looking at properties online and everything this contact does, I have record of, which is powerful. And what I like about it is the fact that we can track some things. So let's say I come to the right hand side in the plus sign and I want to add an activity. That's the little scroll. When I add an activity, that could be a meeting. Maybe we met by Zoom over the weekend. Maybe it was Wednesday. I can say, um, had a Zoom meeting about 123 Main Street. 123 Main Street. I'm just putting in some details. And then I can save that to the system. And guess what? Here is the tracking of that meeting now. We had a meeting and we met about a Zoom meeting because I'm tracking that it was virtual. I can also come to activity and say that we had a phone call. So maybe we had a call and uh, left Jay a voicemail. And that was actually yesterday. Save that one. There we go. On the 16th, left Jay a voicemail. So it's tracking our activities. I can also do a text message, add activity, text message, and track the fact that we had a text message together. Um, sent Jay my app, wanted to see how he's doing. Save it and it adds it to my list as a text message. Notice everything's being color coded. So I'm literally tracking the activity of everything we've done together. Now I've been using this contact a long time. Here are the emails that were sent from my email account to Jay, the contact card. I can also see uh, anything I've subscribed them to. I was sending him a text message like this and here's actually the text messages I've been sending myself to test this out and to see how things are doing. So the whole goal is to manage the contacts and actually track your interaction with them. Now with that, that's really leading us towards, you know, what we're doing. And at the end of the day, we're moving on then to the sales pipeline of stuff. So if I've got my contacts and have everything we're doing with them, then the goal is to help with the sales pipeline of stuff. So as we go back to the model, now when we get to sales pipeline, that's where we start dealing with the relationships, meaning cultivating the relationships, which is an interaction and an action based on a touch program to nurture, then qualify the lead, then get to the appointment or the qual qualify their, their needs, I should say. Get to an appointment to either help them with buying or selling the home, to then sign a contract, to then be an active listing or an active buyer, to then get under contract and then get to closed, right? So the final segment of your database is your sales pipeline. At this point in the model, you've been using prospecting and marketing you to bring leads and contacts into your database. You have worked with both segments of database through touch campaigns to stay top of mind with the conversations. That is that you're going to have conversations that deepen the relationship. Leads and contacts will raise their hands to do business with you. And at that point, of the lead, the contact will then enter the final phase, which is lead generation, of the final lead generation, which is number four, cultivating the lead. And as they cultivate your leads and cultivate, your ultimate goal is to win an appointment so that you can then launch them with the new goal of getting a closed transaction. In command, KDB has developed smart plans 
which will automate the way that you cultivate and stay in touch with them. In just a few minutes, you'll be able to see how to add context to a smart planning command. That is the transactional process through appointment to active, then under contract close, which we talked about. So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here is then smart plans is the last skill because we know in real estate, the money's in the follow-up. So smart plans is just another fancy term for follow-up, a follow-up plan. And this plan is a majority of it's automated, which is great. And not just automated in the traditional sense of maybe a manual email being sent out, an automatic email. This is a reminder to call somebody, add a task to your to-do list for the day, add them to another smart plan if this smart plan expires. And you're going to find we already have a couple made for you, like the monthly and nurture smart plan, which is a monthly email to help you reach out to your clients. The biweekly, which is a twice a month email every 14 days. The quarterly call plan. These three are live and working right now. Then we have some for midterm nurture, birthdays, and more, and even your ability to create your own. So the whole goal is to qualify your contacts and leads the right way. You are looking for who's ready, willing, and able, and you're going to help them to see who needs their immediate attention. Contacts that do have an immediate plan to buy or sell soon can be put on a smart plan so that you can stay top of mind and that you can focus your efforts appropriately. Smart plans are, smart plans are not just for contacts that are ready to buy or sell either. There are also just a variety of ways to work for them. So I'm going to show you how to do one and I'll actually even share with you a video that I made recently today on how to do a care plan with one. So let me go to myself as an example. And there's a couple ways to add smart plans, but what we're gonna do is come to smart plans and look at them first. Because if you've never used a smart plan or turn one on, you can't add a contact to a smart plan until it's enabled. So if you come to smart plans, you're gonna find, now this says my smart plans and yours might be blank right now. That's okay. You haven't created any yet. I have 15 options of smart plans myself. You're gonna come to library and wanna add one of these. So the three we were just talking about would be the biweekly nurture, the monthly neighborhood nurture, and the quarterly call plan. These smart plans, you just click on the add smart plan button and it's in your library to use. What's great about these, like if I look at the bi-weekly, it is basically one email every 14 days and just keeps repeating itself about their neighborhood forever. Same thing with the quarterly call plan. It is basically a phone call reminder today, wait 90 days and then remind you again forever. So you never drop the ball and forget to call somebody. We had the same kind of option in our older system, eEdge, but eEdge had a lot of smart plans that expired. And they were ones that every March we had to prepare because it would expire. And if you forgot to put them on it, it didn't keep going. So these will match with some of those smart plans. There's also some in here for birthdays, home anniversaries, your new KW app. There's one to promote your app. By the way, this app one includes an email to them and then automatic text message. So you can actually program text messages to go out. Now I shared with you, I did a new video. So I'll pull up YouTube real quick and I'll search for myself if you haven't seen any of my videos before. So just type in my name, Jay Cermak, and I promise I will show up right away. There I am, Jay Cermak, trainer extraordinaire. And I did a video a while ago. So if I say Jay Cermak um, care, you will find this is it, my care plan. So I reposted this online today and my care plan is a custom smart plan I made. So in my smart plans, you'll see all the different ones I have. Like I have one for Facebook ads because you can create your own now. I have one about leaving Zillow for recruiting. And here's my care plan. So my care plan kind of looks like this and I will just hit the pencil to edit it and show you what one looks like. Now, this is a little more in depth than what the class is telling you to do. But here's what I thought would be a good care call. Today, it's just about caring about people, right? They just want to hear from you. So I set up a 15 day plan to do 13 steps and five touches to remember everybody. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ah, thank you. Yeah, you're asking about the, the texting and sharing stuff. So the emails are free and that's already included in it. But the texting, you have two options with texting. I pay for Twilio to do it for me. So Twilio is not very expensive. It's $1 a month to own my own personal phone number. So I bought a 954 local Florida number from them. I pay a dollar a month for that. And then I pay 0 0.0075 of a penny, which is not even 0.1 of a penny to send out a text message from the system automatically. Yet, if you don't have that, the free option is still here, which is it will give you a reminder to send a text 
that you could do privately, like just send it yourself from your phone. So you don't have to pay for that service. You would get an alert saying, hey, don't forget to text Jay today. And here's the script to use. And you can literally copy and paste it in like I'm on my Mac. So I can send it from my messenger or Facebook to remind it to send it to them. But it does. I like the automatic part of it. So there's more videos and stuff to learn about that, but Twilio is not very expensive. I'm using it and it would automate this text message. So my care plan comes down to me organizing, hey, day one, I just want to call them. And I literally added a task item that says care call with first name, last name, what's their phone number, and show we care. I'm just going to literally call and say, how are you doing? And how's your family? Is there anything we can help you with right now? That's it. I want the reminder to call them within 24 hours and when I add this plan. Then I want to wait a couple days. Now I said five days. I can make it three days, two days, and then I'm going to send them a text message. Now I do have Twilio. If I didn't, it would just remind me to text them manually. And I have a text message saying, hi, Jay. It's Jay Sermic with the Jay team. I wanted to check in and see how you're doing. How are you? So now I called them, waited a couple days, and now my phone is going to automatically text them from a phone number. And I'm telling them who it is in the message. And it's just going to say, hi, so-and-so. How are you doing right now? Then I'm going to wait two days and send them another email. But this email, now I'm going to go into value. So I wrote a message and I'm happy to share this with you guys as well if you want. Um, I will put it together in a word format you can copy and paste. Um, it is in the video. You can pause the video to get it. So I, I kind of just wrote this myself. And I, I wrote the subject of staying up to date on the real estate market in this time of uncertainty. And I literally wrote, hey, with all the uncertainty world, we want to ensure that you stay informed on what's happening specifically in the real estate market related to your home values. We don't send information about all of the U.S. Hey, does this sound like what I was telling you earlier? <laughs> this is the script. We would like to send you specific information about your neighborhood and the neighborhoods you care about. We dislike spam just like the next person. So if you'd like to receive this once a month email, now I'm doing the monthly, you can do the biweekly um, email about your specific neighborhood, simply hit reply and let me know your current address and any other neighborhood you care about. And then I wrote, would it be okay to send you a monthly email about your neighborhood? Hope you're all well in these times of uncertainty. If there's anything my team and I can do, let us know. Sincerely, your realtor. And I wrote my name, my information. That email will go out automatically by this point, by day eight. So you guys, in just five steps, I've now done a phone call reminder, a text message a couple of days later, and an email. And then I keep going, by the way. I wait another day, and then I send them another task to say, hey, check in on them. See if you got that. And if you did, add them to a smart plan. So I added a task list to remind me to do something. Then I waited three days, and now I'm going to send them another email. But this time, I want to promote my app. So I'm coming from value, still caring about the member. Everything's still going to say, we wanted to see if there's anything you need. So I'm still following up. But this time, the email is going to say, hey, the reason for today is I want to share with you a new way to do real estate. And by the way, you could save money on mortgage and insurance on this app. If you haven't downloaded it yet, click the link here and download it. So this email is all about saving the money with my app. I wait another couple of days. I want to call them again, check by phone to see if they need anything. And then it's going to end the care plan. And I'm going to remind myself to end it and decide what I want to do next, which I could say when this is done, add them to another smart plan. So I could add them. Actually, I will do that step. I'll add it to a smart plan to customize this. Add it to a smart plan. And when it's done, I want to put them on the quarterly call plan. Just from now on, remember to call them every quarter so that we don't lose that momentum. So that's just a way to have the smart plan. So I'll go back to my contact card and show you how to add it. So now that my plan has ended, I'm going to go back to my record real quick. So I will pull up Jay Sturmack this contact card and I'm going to re-add myself to that smart plan now that it ended. So you're going to come to smart plans in the contact card. You can also click this button. And when you add a smart plan, here's the list of all my smart plans. Now, as I said, if your list is blank, you have to go back to smart plans and do this, but I'm going to go ahead and add myself now to the care plan right here. Here are all the care plans. I'm going to select it. When do you want to start? I want to start today, or I can start it on a specific date, like Monday or Saturday, but I'm good with starting it now. Hit confirm. Here's a reminder of all the little steps. And it's, uh, it, you will all get this warning, by the way. If you have Twilio, it'll automatically send your message. If you don't, it adds it to your to-do list for the day. Don't forget to text so-and-so. And it will put the script of it, by the way. So here's my text script. Hey, it's Jay, I wanted to check in with you. 
I would be able to copy and paste that. And then all I do is hit confirm and guess what? They're now on my list. So I'm gonna have a new task list in the next day to add them to that and my smart plan is now active here. The money is in the follow-up, but everything starts with having the contact in the system, then organizing my contacts in a way that I can find them and then smart views to view them, which ultimately leads then to the smart plans to automate that follow-up. And as I shared, I have that video that was sent out today, so you guys can always go there as well to get that. So let's look at our ahas that we've gotten so far. We're doing a quick little check-in with you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and briefly kind of pull up everyone's camera here. Awesome. So let's look at the ahas of this. Oops, it went too far. There we go. So how has your thinking changed around this? How do you guys feel? What are the behaviors you're gonna do and what tools? So if you wanna unmute yourself, go ahead and come on the camera and share any ahas that you guys have so far about what we've been talking about. It's definitely about um, being consistent in mm -hmm. communicating with your database. And so my coach um, encouraged me to add 10 for this week. I was started with zero. I have 17. I added them to my smart plan and I was going to follow up. So it is consistent, consist, being consistent to um, one, create the relationship like you said, and with not just trying to get business, but to build the relationship. And then they'll see that you care about them and they'll realize that you're trustworthy and then they'll use you when you want when they want to list or buy a home. Well, it's about relationship. You know, it's interesting. We brought this up back in the fifties. Nobody bought a home without knowing the realtor. No one did. And now we're less than 40% of all real estate happens by referral now, like by knowing an agent, meaning everyone else came from Zillow, gave me someone's name. I didn't know them. That's, that's boggling. And we're getting back there. We got to get those numbers up. And I think you're right. It's just reaching out to them, building that relationship. So when the time comes, you're there. So I love that. Aha. Anyone else want to share an aha or something that they got so far from what we've shared? I was just thinking uh, how important it is for the care plan to really think about the care of your clients and making sure that they're on a smart plan and that you're consistently following up because like you said, they can get really upset if you're not calling them and if you aren't caring for them and just like any consumer, you need to make sure that you're providing for them. When I love that, what I did with that care plan, I really just started off with just checking in on them. I don't even mention business until like over a week later. Right, exactly. And it comes up great, but it's just saying, hey, how are you right now? And I was on a call yesterday. Um, I'm fixing, I was switching my uh, renter's insurance and the lady was like, you are so kind. Thank you. Because everyone had been rude to her lately. And I'm like, I, it, it seemed simple to me. And I was just being, I was thanking her. I was being kind. She's like, wow, I thank you for just being nice. Right. I realized once you, you, you go coming from a place for care, everything else falls into place, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. Any other ahas anybody wants to share? All right. That's okay. All right. So let's get back. I think we're pretty much wrapping this up. So this is kind of like not a fast version of it, but that's really the meat of what it is. So at the end of the day, it's about your daily success habits. So I know we just heard someone share their bold coach was saying, or their coach, like adding 10 contacts today. So the goal of Spark is what if you added 10 people to your system a day? I promise you, you've got more than 10 people on your phone. Start with that list and add it to command. And out of those, have 10 conversations a day. And then write them a handwritten note. You want to make some impact on somebody right now? The things that work, that are crushing it, send somebody a simple how are you card or something nice. I mean, they're at home. No one can physically see them. Give them something to look forward to. Send them something fun. Um, I have a friend who does a scratch offs. He sends me a scratch off every St. Patrick's Day, hoping I have a little bit of luck. Why not send someone a scratch off right now? Send them an activity for the kids to do. Send them an iTunes gift card or something to watch a movie. And um, the other things you can do, send like, send them toilet paper, send them masks, leave them a little care package at their door. There's so many things you can do to give them value. So the handwritten cards you can do, that does well. And then preview 10 homes a week was always the goal of Ignite. The difference now is just do it virtually. Do you know the inventory? Do you know the market? Can you explain to somebody about a home? 
do you know how to do it virtually with somebody? Right? These are things that we can be doing and the activities of it. And the reality is we're in a shift right now. So the shift book tells us you should double your activities. Yet I understand that if you've never done anything with command, 10 contacts might seem painful a day, but the reality is what would 20 of those look like a day? What would it look like at the end of the week? If you do every 10 a day, that's 50 for the week. What would hundred look like for the week? What would hundred conversations look like? Just talk to more people and it's easier than you think it is. And by the way, um, even with Bold, we do, uh, Bold does the same activities, by the way, we just double them. So the Bold class is Business Objective Life by Design. And in that class, they tell us to do 20 contacts a day to our database. And then they tell us to do 20 conversations a day, which is 100 a week. And they do tell us to do the homes and look at the stuff there. And what's funny is looking at this and doing that, um, part of those conversations can also be by text message now. And half those conversations could also be by Facebook. Private message someone on Facebook. I, I was just thinking about you. We wanted to check in. Comment on them socially and interact with them. You can drop that I don't know you very well fast with social media by just interacting with people. So those are the activities to work on here. And at the end of the day, when it comes to the lead generation part of this, right, it, it's also about scripts. So the daily habit is also about memorizing your scripts and your internal scripts and, and learning scripts is important because practicing and internalizing scripts allows your business to grow. And just as the doctor learns in anatomy before working with patients, agents need to learn scripts before they start having meaningful conversations with clients. And with the script, you can control the conversation by actually um, using purposeful language that helps you get to the end point, a transaction. They help you communicate your value. Once you have internalized scripts, you can add your value proposition, which will help lead generate efforts and lead to closing details. Scripts help you uncover motivations about the buyer and seller, identify any objections you can handle them up front. They allow you to have a rehearsed response that delivers a powerful message in the way that you consumers best understand it and allows you to ask questions in a way that they will be able to quickly share information with you and that will, you'll be able to help their needs better. They just help basically. So scripts are important. Now, what are some ways that you could do to get help? Um, I, I skipped one of the activities was gonna be to go through the script uh, book, but basically practice scripts. Practice the how are you doing script. That's the easiest one. The best script in the world is Adele. Hello, how are you? <laughs> it's still the best script in the world. That's how it starts. So practice with somebody, right? There's eight of us on this call right now. Practice with each other. Choose a partner to practice with. I, I practice scripts with people just to see how things are going. So where are ways to get help with what we shared today with Command, with the KDB Connect or some of the resources? So in Command, we have a question mark and kbconnect.com has tons of resources, including the resources we're sharing today which is the Ignite resources. And at the end of the day, your goal is to get through all this stuff so that we can actually help you here and take advantage of this stuff, right? So there's the help articles. We already shared where resources are. There's tons of them there. There's tons of Facebook group. There's no shortage of help in this company. And the whole goal of what we wanted to do is make your success list today. What are those things that you're gonna to do today? What are you observing about that you wanna do? Um, create this list today, right? And once you have your list, what are the actions you're gonna do? What are those, those do's and don'ts? So one of these things I would have on my to-do list, add my 10 people to my database, which I need to go do after this call and go add my family members that are sitting on a calendar behind me with their address so that I have them in my own system. Um, I could be learning more about command. I could be in the, uh, Pivot Shift Ahead Facebook group, which I was in this morning, which is the book club with James Shaw to start learning on. Be on training like this to start learning from. Like, what are those to do things that you can? And then we want you to write all those down. That's actually the version of Ignite. Now, the part I didn't do with you was the hour of we wanted you to script and role play and make your calls for the day. And there's different activities that this course normally has. Yet, I want to get the meat of this out. I want you to see what things to do to get your mindset right, to get the model in there. So what you guys can do to help me is I am in the process of being a Keller Williams approved trainer and I am almost done with my survey. So I only need four more and I will be an approved trainer. So if you guys would do me a favor and go to the website, kwueval.com 
And when you pull up this list, it's going to give you this little menu and it's going to ask you what kind of training is it. Now, they don't have this course in the right area if you say it is a online or connect live training. So we're just going to call it market center training for this example. It'll ask what type of market center or training. So market center training. And then the name of this course is in the list. You can scroll down to Ignite Session 2. We know it's the newer version, uh, but I talked to Kellams University the other day, and that's the category that will help. And when you get to the section number three that says instructor, I'm not in the list just yet. I will be next month. So if you just scroll all the way to the bottom of that list, it has a category that says instructor not in the drop down. And you can type in my name, J A Y space C E R M A K. And if I did a great job, my name is Jay Cermak. If I did not, do a great job. You can just not fill out the survey. No, you can give me honest feedback. I appreciate it. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. Um, I'm always looking to improve my skills to get better. I enjoy training, as you can tell. Um, and, and really, it's here for you guys. So if you can take a moment for that, I would appreciate it. This will be live on Facebook Live or recorded. So those who want to watch it later, you can always give me a review whenever you get a chance to watch this. And that's a lot of what we want to cover today. So thank you guys so much for your time. I will open up here for questions in a moment. Great job. Um, yeah, they were asking if you can add multiple people to the plan. Yes, so there's an ability, if you go to the smart plan view, you can actually in smart plans add it by a tag. So if I go to smart plans, instead of me going to the to contact, in the smart plans, you can add multiple people at the same time. So great question, yep, we can add them there. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Spending, uh, we, we did in about an hour and 15 minutes, not too shabby. So we got some great information. If you didn't get to be here at the beginning of the course, this is recorded so you can go back through. The handout today was on jcermac.com. I have other trainings for next week around command. You're welcome to come to that as well. Um, and this is truly helping me 